home to the greenery. Hi, my name is Kirsten Segler from The Greenery. In the next few minutes, we're going to talk about uh, our next few species of tender succulents, mainly concentrating on the Crassula family. Uh, so we're just going to go through the examples we have behind me, uh, give you their name, a few little pointers about them, uh, and we hope you enjoy it. Okay, we're going to start with this uh, beautiful little trailing variety in the front. Uh, it's called Crassula marginalis rubra. And as you can see by the uh, sort of red edge on the foliage, uh, that's why it's given the name uh, Rubra. Now this coloration really comes out strong uh, in the late season. Again, I've described that before in our earlier parts on Echeveria. Uh, we got nice sunny days, cool nights. And then uh, that's what sort of pushes out these uh, vibrant colors uh, on a lot of the different species of tender succulents. So really nice one to put on the edge of your uh, mixed bowls, etc., because it has a sort of a thick trailing habit um, and, and will fill in little spaces in between some of your other succulents. Behind it, um, this is kind of a larger upright species. Now, a lot of these here are about four years old, so these are our stock pots, and we thought we'd do the segment on these before we take the cuttings and do our propagating, um, just to get, give you the idea of how large they can get. Uh, but typically when we're selling them in the three and a half inch square pots, uh, you know, they're about this tall. Uh, this variety here is called Crescula Chinese Pagoda. And uh, if you uh, look at this a little closely, you can see how the foliage is uh, hooked up, kind of like the, the bottom of those uh, the Chinese buildings, the way that the tiles have that hook on the end, and I'm pretty sure that's why they're giving it that name, so Chinese uh, Pagoda. Back to the front, uh, here we've got uh, another variety, uh, more of a trailing habit to it as well, like the one uh, that we described earlier. Uh, that variety there is called Crescula commutata. Um, just a nice little red edge on it, sort of a bluey silver look to the foliage. Um, and with most uh, Crescula, as you can see, the leaves alternate. Two go this way, two go that way, and they stack up on each other. So depending on the, the variety, some are a little more compact than others, different shape and size and, and, and that of the, of the leaves. Back here, this uh, may look familiar to a lot of people as your typical jade plant, and it's true. Crassula or jades are a type of crassula. Uh, so this is a, a lot of times just sold as uh, jade plant. Um, but this variety is given a specific name. It's Crassula Crosby's Compact. Um, and it uh, has a little smaller leaf than some of the other varieties we'll talk about later on in this uh, segments. But uh, like a lot of the tender succulents, uh, you can grow them outdoors in our Okanagan climate. Uh, these ones don't need to be in full sun all day. They are extremely drought tolerant, but uh, half day, three quarter day sun. And then you can bring your mixed bowls or individual pots in in the fall, uh, put them on a windowsill where they're getting a lot of nice, bright, indirect light. And you can size these up and up pot them year after year and to get something that looks like this in four or five years. Uh, just great uh, outdoor, indoor type plants. And the front here, um, cool little ripply leaf to it. Uh, it's called Crassula arborescence ripple jade. Uh, ripple jade obviously because of the uh, rippled jade colored leaf or jade for typical name for the jade plant. Um, so again, nice uh, a little bit of a different look with that twisted leaf on it. Back here, this is uh, Crassula oveda variegata. Oveda simply meaning oval leaf. Like a lot of the jades, they do have that oval-shaped uh, leaf, and this has got a variegated look to it, kind of cream, cream, uh, two-tone green and cream variegation in the leaf habit. All right, this next one in front of us here, Crescula falcata, uh, almost looks like a propeller leaf, a very slow-growing uh, variety of Crescula. 
But uh, what a neat look. Um, you can see that on film, but uh, again, it has the alternating sets of leaves, but these are real long and they're twisted a bit, so it does look like that propeller look um, in its growth habit. Um, but it uh, works great as a sort of a centerpiece in mixed planters because it does get a little bit taller with those longer, narrow leaves poking out uh, on the sides. Behind it here, another uh, larger variety of, uh, like a typical jade again, but it has this curled up, the leaf kind of curls up and makes a hollow um, opening or snout in it. And uh, specifically this one is called Cressula Hobbit. Um, and uh, it's a coarser sort of turned in leaf and some of them create uh, actual tubes. We'll break one off here, you can see there, that one's fully closed in and sealed and then it's a, a tube going all the way down. But again, a real easy one to bring in and, and grow larger uh, as an indoor plant in, in the winter months. And uh, we might as well go here beside it. This is very similar in habit. Again, it has the rounder closed in leaves with the tubes, but it's a little bit of a smaller version, not as coarse, I mean. And uh, it's called Gollum. So some of these names, uh, they've sort of marketed off the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, as you can tell. So as an older, species they were given a kind of an ordinary name but to market them now and get them a little more uh, make them seem a little more exciting while well, they've given these uh, these new names uh, uh, over here Hobbit and Gollum and you can see too, just a, lot, a little bit heavier foliage smaller leaves but again a lot of them are creating these little uh, tubes real cool look uh, this is Crescula arborescens uh, we're calling it little leaf um, you know, even ourselves, some of these, you, you know, we collect them, we find little plants here and there as we travel, uh, grow them up and start propagating them. And we do our best to sort of research and make sure the names are correct, but uh, we actually have two right next to each other that were purchased as little plants for our collection. And they were named exactly the same, Cressula arborescence. This one here and this one here. Um, so I don't think that's incorrect, but I think they're two separate varieties, obviously. So for now, we're just calling this Cressula arborescens uh, little leaf and Cressula arborescens uh, large leaf. Uh, obviously, you can see here, I'm gonna take a sniff off, uh, just great big disc-like leaves with uh, that powdery look on them, nice red edge coming around and uh, compared to this one, obviously, with the, the smaller leaf. So that's uh, the names we're giving them, large leaf and small leaf.